I went to fashion school, so I guess that's a good start. Um, So I went to the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. Um, uh, I started as a stylist, and I realized that I love writing, and I love branding, and um, I love storytelling and kind of uh, creating a fantasy world, kind of, or just art in general expression. So then I went on to do a lot of copywriting and advertising, and I started a vegan page on Instagram. And one day someone reached out to me and it wasn't, I mean, I guess it's one of those things where like the stars aligned and Belen, who's actually one of our other co-founders reached out to me and she said, I have a friend who has this amazing idea. Like, would you be interested in possibly collaborating or listening to what we have to say? Mm -hmm. She called up like the top 15 people she knew and she knew in Barcelona that were specifically vegan Yeah, and kind of pitched this idea to a marketplace to us. And they all dropped like flies, but I was the only one who, who stayed because I was really interested because it kind of like brought together all of my passions. I kind of stuck it through and I had to f- create a team and I had to find people who were also, who also knew what they were doing. And um, I guess just my belief in this is what made me stick it out. And I found Chris- Christiane, who f- has also founded other companies. Yeah. So I was like, great, because I have no experience in that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was like, you do the stuff that I have no idea, no idea. how to do. <laughs> and um, she's been fantastic. And yeah, and we've slowly but surely been growing the team. We've brought on two new people. Yeah. And yeah. it's been really exciting. And- we spoke about um, your Instagram page um, and kind of how that, you know, gave you the opportunity for this. But has um, vegan fashion been something that you've been into for like a really long time? Were you kind of one of the early people who were kind of interested in this space um, and or, like the technology um, kind of in this fashion sector as well? Or is it something you've kind of, you know, learned more and more as, um, as everything's developed within the industry? No, I was one of the earlier people in my in my world anyway. I mean, the only thing that caused some sort of hindrance or wasn't making it work for me were shoes. Mm. Um, mm. I couldn't find shoe. I, I love heels. Yeah. I couldn't find shoes and I couldn't find bags that, that made me excited. Yeah. I came across a lot of like plasticky things that looked really shitty and I wasn't like willing to put them on. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm going full blown vegan. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then that's when a lot of research came into play and I had to like, I would spend hours like looking, digging through the internet, finding like designers. I came across a lot of Stella McCartney's designs. Um, I came across like one pair of parents schooler, schooler boots that were vegan just because, um, and my whole world was like turned upside down because all of the designers that I had loved and the way that I had loved dressing before was kind of to kind of had to shift. Yeah. And do you, do you think kind of you said there that you you know you were finding these vegan products that were plastic or you weren't finding the alternatives you wanted? Do you think that kind of you as a consumer really noticed that gap in the market and that kind of spurred you on to work in the spaces that you're working in today? Well, yes, very much so. So it wasn't like, how do I say this? It wasn't like that moment propelled me into a space where I thought that I would do this. But when the the opportunity arose, I was reverted back to this time when I was like, holy shit, this has been a problem my whole life. Well, not my whole life, my whole adult life. So, so that's what, that's what I was mentioning before when I said I stuck around Yeah, because I just knew that this is an issue. Like, I, I mean, I know that there are other vegan vegans out there who like fashion, like Mm. they're, they don't need to just dress in Birkenstocks and, you know, wear patchouli. Although I love patchouli, nothing wrong with that. Tom Ford has a fantastic fragrance. That's white patchouli. (laughs) But like, that's not the point. What I'm saying is that, you know, there are people who like really want to, you know, be weird and funky and cool and trendy. Yeah, and, and you, you know, know, not just wear Birkenstocks or like whatever you know. Yeah, completely the granola think, stuff. Yeah, granola. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I mean, coming on to that, in terms of like these misconceptions associated with vegan fashion, which there are loads of them. I mean, granola is the perfect term, and just but just in general, um, people don't really associate vegan fashion with being particularly trendy or stylish or yeah. in the now. Right. Um, and how I was kind of wondering how um, coming from like your um 
background in branding um, and trying to break these misconceptions in your image and marketing and um, how you kind of approach that? Apart from um, drawing attention to us and making, uh, making the Living Grace brand seem appropriate and cool and fun, there's also a lot of education that comes into account. Yeah. It's more of like, why would you choose this over something else? Tonight we have um, an exercise where we talk to a marketer that we were just working with about color theory and how we can possibly tweak our palette and our communication style to, you know, better fit our brand and what it is that we want to project. Yes. So I can't say that we have the formula yes. perfect yet. It's a work, it's a work in progress. And mm -hmm. I think that we're shifting along with the needs of the market. Cause I know I can only speak for myself, but I don't represent the whole market. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of um, education and growth that's had to occur on my behalf. Yeah. But, um, it's been a lot of like talking to people, a lot of networking, talking to other vegans, talking to non-vegans specifically as well. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a huge market, you know, preferably a lot of people are going to buy from us that are non-vegan that are just interested in making the world a better place. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So there's, um, there's been a lot of communication on our behalf, a lot of question asking. That's what you, I mean, that's what we've got to get is the feedback so that we, it, this can be more readily worn and more kind of readily purchased by, like you say, not just people who've already adopted veganism, but people who are kind of learning, uh, adapting their kind of consumer habits and their uh, aligning their values and things. Um, yeah. We don't want to be exclude. Actually, we want to be as inclusive as possible. Exactly. And yeah. you know, that's a whole nother part. Like we're using models of all shapes and sizes and yeah. like, we're trying, like, we're not just limiting. And part of that inclusivity is not just limiting it to veganism. It's like, it's just opening the doors for everyone to shop in a different way. Yeah. I think there's kind of loads of things you can read online um, about different materials and vegan fashion related to sustainability. And obviously the, you know, sustainable fashion isn't synonymous to vegan fashion, but there's a lot Correct. of, overlap here um so if you could just maybe like talk us through a little bit about um how vegan fashion is more sustainable um and you know why making that choice is actually better for our environment okay so there are different words here used so um veganism i mean i guess i'm just going to give the definition not to you but just to in, in general, the general yeah. sphere <laughs> So veganism is basically that no animal products were used in the creation and or production and or testing of the whole product within itself. Yeah. That is sometimes used synonymous with ethical, with ethical fashion, but they're not synonymous in that ethical fashion kind of focuses more on the human aspect. So like no sweatshops, uh, I don't know, like no child labor, all, all of that stuff. But what happens is that because the word ethical means what it means, animals also tend to come fall into that sphere. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to slow fashion, it's usually used in terms of like the antithesis of fast fashion. So it means that like systems are in place where the sole purpose or the goal isn't to just have something turn around really quickly. Like it goes through like a, a relatively slow process of a chain reaction. And then sustainable fashion is anything that or any practice that is implemented in order to uh, do the least amount of harm to the environment as possible. Yeah. So that usually involves um, uh, non-toxic chemicals, that you, which are used widely in the animal industry. I mean, like a grotesque amount. So that's kind of where that's kind of where vegan fashion, vegan fashion and sustainable fashion come together. The non-destruction of land, for example. So we have um, the use of land in itself. When you have animals, those animals need to be tended to and they need to live somewhere. Yeah. So yeah. vegan fashion cuts that use of land. The animals need to consume. We waste more grain and more land and more products on animals than we do on humans. <laughs> like that's just a well-known fact. Yeah. So yeah. then that... That, that land that's not only used to keep the animals and harbor them is also um, multiplied by the fact that we also need land in order to feed them. Mm. So that automatically saves a bunch of thousands and millions of hectares. Yeah. Uh, the animals have very, I don't, I don't know if you've watched any of the documentaries, but animals have um, very terrible gas. They're kept in like very small containers. Um, how do I say this? Like they're, their gases or their excretions are like tight together. So they create kind of like um, poisonous environment. Okay, like it's, yeah. um, it's, yeah, like it's too much ca gas, it's too much carbon. It's just, it's very, it's very pollutant and very toxic. Yeah. 
So what happens with the with that is that then that goes into the water. It affects the plant life. So there seems to be this um, this growth happening where it's not just the animal, like where the animal is held. It's everything that involves the animal and how that affects every system. Like literally, even if you think about the people who have to slaughter the animals, there are higher rates of suicide among, amongst those people. There are higher rates of depression. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on. Yes. Right. So vegan fashion says, okay, we know that we can reuse what already exists on the planet. And we know that a lots of plants have really long fibers that are great to make textiles. Mm-hmm. Obviously we don't like the short shitty fibers because they come apart. They pill, they'll, they'll, they'll break your clothing in like 20 washes. Mm-hmm. So like we like longer fibers like pina tex or like longer synthetic fibers like eco neal and things like this. Yeah things that I've seen kind of read online and you get snippets of kind of these vegan fashion fibers and you know there's they're they're great in terms of we're cutting out the animal but I mean cotton for instance has had a hugely bad rep in terms of its um, water and pesticide um, usage Um, and obviously there's then the problem of different kind of uh, man-made um, polymers, kind of, and microplastics, yeah, synthetic um, fibers, and things like this. And then, if we're washing back microplastics into the system, or if we're using tons and tons of water and pesticides, then is our overall impact um, actually still a positive one? And how can we kind of counteract this? I think that's a great question, and I think that was part of my my questioning when I first came into all of this. Two things that I want to discuss. The first thing is. Um, all of these pesticides are still being used to feed the animals, right? So, like, mm. it's not that, like, all of a sudden we, or, or I mean, kine is a big one. I have to say, kine isn't used to be, to be fed and to be fed for animals, but that's a whole nother conversation. But <laughs> pesticides have created a part of our lifestyle, like they they exist already. Yeah, it's not like now all of a sudden we have more pesticides in the world. It's actually quite the opposite. We're like eliminating the use of these plants and these animals, and we're just sticking to. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know if I'm being clear out, on that. So that's yeah. like one argument that the leather industry will never acknowledge because why would they? Yeah. <laughs> Not all farming is created equal. So this is one of the reasons why we're really big on having brands that are based in Europe or at least producing in Europe or doing a bunch of things in Europe. The laws are a lot more stringent. How to work around it, I think, is just to do your research. Not all fibers are created the same. Yeah. Uh, not all countries are the same. Not all certification processes are the same. And I think that we also have to be willing to pay a bit more for the work. It's so funny because like everything we consume comes in plastic and we don't think twice about it. Yeah. It's so funny how like we tend to like only concentrate on the negatives of veganism as far as like the plastic world is concerned, but we don't apply it to like this rationale everywhere else. Yeah. And I guess my, my only argument for that is one, put it in perspective because everything we touch is plastic. So like, let's be real. Let's not lie to each other here. And two, I can't think of one system or the evolution of anything that hasn't needed work. Like, I know that we're not perfect. And I know that, so I will admit that some of the options are still bad. Like, yeah. they're not my favorite. But we need a stepping stone and we need to start somewhere. Exactly. And with, like, vegan fashion and with a lot of kind of fashion technology that's up and coming. You, you, like, as you say, you're completely right. We've got to start somewhere. Um, and so kind of criticizing the initial steps isn't going to get us anywhere. Um, so let's yeah. just go with it and see and see how the development goes. And, you know, we might be sat here in 10 years having a completely different conversation about, you know, how we we've, we've found these these textiles that we were not washing microplastics and all this. Um, but a lot of our designers also mix natural fibers or natural fabrics with a little bit of PVC. So it's not that it's not that you're, they're using entirely plastic materials. It's that they're using biodegradable materials. But in order for your clothes and your shoes to not biodegrade on you, you need mm-hmm. a little bit of um, of a synthetic. Yeah. So that's where I see the progress as well. I see the progress with these like Catholic uh, uh, cactus leathers and, you know, like Pina Tex is making a huge boom and a uh, hemp is one that I've seen that's had a huge come up. It's just, again, people have to be willing to pay a higher price point and not pay $15 or 15 pounds for a pair of shoes. Sorry yeah. to say. Yeah. So, so then coming on to that in terms of how you have um, kind of found it with your, the uptake of vegan fashion and things, what do you think are these huge hurdles prohibiting people? I mean, price point, like as you referenced, is definitely one of them. Um, but that needs to come from a kind of change in attitude um, from a consumer perspective. Are there any other key hurdles um, that you can kind of see and, and how are you and your team trying to counteract those or, or combat them? 
Yeah. Well, price point is obviously a big one, but there's also like this sense of what is luxury. People tend to think that vegan fashion is uh, cheap and they think of plastic and they think of ugly design. And when they think of leather, they think of Valentino and they think of Hermes and they think of all of these like high fashion, beautiful, luxurious brands. Even though they're not buying those designers, leather seems to equate quality. One of the major hurdles is showing people that you can have a durable, beautiful, sleek, well-designed bag made from apple leather and not necessarily animal skin. Kind of this um, image making and storytelling, which we've got to rewrite the story of what vegan fashion is um, and kind of redefine the images to make it seem plush and luxury and, you know, something people kind of aspire for and all this kind of stuff instead of it constantly being focused on fur and leathers as it historically um, has been. Correct. My final question um, to you was just thinking a lot recently kind of about uh, trends um, and how things um, kind of become trendy and whether trends can be positive or negative. I think veganism is definitely something that is on the rise with a lot of kind of millennials and has become, and vegan fashion in particular has become trendy um, recently is a a positive for you guys are are we seeing more people adopting it and therefore you know anyone who's wanted to educate themselves wanted to become involved is great or is there some negative in the fact that this is people uh shopping vegan fashion and becoming involved in these spaces and these circles of communication purely for kind of a good samaritan feel good uh quality um or this kind of millennial Um, want to appear a certain way um, online or aesthetically instead of a real kind of profound um, desire to to understand veganism and its benefits my mind goes philosophical here (laughs) because I don't necessarily believe in singularity like I don't think that there's a such thing as good or bad or one thing is totally good one thing is totally bad but I think it's both (laughs) I'm I'm sorry if that's not clear no 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 Um, I definitely think that it's beautiful that some people are awakening and some people are very interested in in um whether it be animal welfare or the wealth of the environment or their own health or any of the myriad or or their anti-government which is how I started (laughs) or any of the many reasons that they decide to look into veganism I think it's great. Now, if there is not a thought process behind this and um, there's not an incorporation of the soul, um, then it's just vapid and, and, and shallow like anything else in this human world. Um, So I definitely think that there needs to be some kind of like reasoning behind it. Like I think action is important, but I also believe in intention. Do you think as education uh, over veganism and vegan fashion in particular, because I think a lot of people understand the benefits of veganism in the terms of kind of eating consumption food but perhaps not in terms of the clothes we wear do you think education will this will awaken or lead more people to go you know what I need to change my shopping habits um this is what my kind of biggest impact biggest imprint on the environment is yeah I think people are coming into their power with what they can do with their money I think that people are coming into their own and they are understanding that they they can they can have a decision and they can choose how to use how to use their money and who and and who to back really yeah um, I also think that there's a huge money. awakening with the younger generation um, I think that COVID has helped a lot to help people get back to their roots help people get back to their internal lives and ask what is important yeah well no I definitely think there's more kind of people are placing their money in spaces that they value more um, and hopefully with that kind of rise as you say rise in intention and in wanting to you know, put money into places that you believe in and not into places you don't. Hopefully we will see um, more people aligning their kind of habits with their values. Um, yeah. Well, there's also the, the, the birth of this, um, like, social media activists where people just make videos explaining all of these things. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I've come a lot of accounts on, on Instagram and on TikTok where it's people just, like, explaining what social activism means, what that can look like. Like, look at Greta. She became, like, yeah. a sensation, really. Yeah. So um, it's happening. It's happening for sure. Yeah. I, it's, there's it. a wave. It's just what, how, how soon you're going to get on it or not. I mean, that's up to the individual. But the wave is happening, and it's here to stay. Yeah. And I think it's just going to grow, to be quite honest. That was kind of all the questions I had for you. So thank you so much. Um, 
we're going to write a bit of an article um, about all things vegan fashion, but featuring um, the collection and kind of um, and, and this interview and, and everything. Um, so I'll keep you in the loop with that and I can send you all the links once it's all done and dusted. Sure. And 